Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you a base that I built out of cardboard. This thing, super, super fun, really, really easy to build. Uh, just got to move over here. I just wanted to show you, uh, man, it, it took me about an hour and a half to build it from a kit. Here's what it sounds like. Full disclosure, I'm not an upright bass player. I am a bass player, but upright bass is not something I have had the opportunity of owning. I would love to own an upright bass, but um, number one, can't really afford one right now. Number two, I don't really have this space. If you know me and my channel, I have something around, I think like 35 to 37 guitars right now. Mandolins, basses, keyboards. I'm sort of choked up to here with instruments. So um, no room for an upright bass. So this thing came across my radar a long time ago when it first was invented. It's called a Bogdan bass. There's a really nice guy that makes the kits for you. They cost $120. You can buy it on Reverb, uh, Reverb.com. This is 100% unsponsored. I bought the thing because I wanted it. I started chatting with the guy and learned that actually I think um, like his job, he's really a, a mailman. He's a postal carrier. So that's pretty awesome. And this is sort of his side gig. So I, I was like, man, I enjoy this thing so much. I'm going to make a video for GarageBand and Beyond because I think you guys might also enjoy this. This is a really fun, you know, afternoon project. Um, So, uh, as you might have heard some of that scratchiness right there, the bridge is floating, so it does move, um, you know, if you tug a little bit too much on the strings, the bridge will move. I would love to figure out, I mean, maybe just a piece of tape or something to hold it down there would be great. Um, but I mean, you know, for jamming around a campfire, this thing is absolutely perfect for anybody who either does play the upright and doesn't really want to bring their expensive instrument around, or if you're someone like me who wants an upright, can't afford it, um, doesn't have the space, but wants to sort of, you know, experiment. It's not a real upright. I'm aware of that. Even the physical activity of having an arm up here and an arm down here, uh, it gets you sort of, you know, in that realm of upright bass. One thing I will say, if, um, if the inventor of this thing ever watches this video, it would be cool because this is a neck through design, right? So it goes all the way from here, all the way down to here. I hit the ceiling. The strings are actually screwed into uh, a, another piece of wood. So you connect this neck piece to a middle piece and then there's another piece down here. There's three pieces that you have to glue and screw together. Inventor, Mr. Bogdan, I, perhaps your last name is Bogdan. Uh, a neck angle wouldn't be, I don't think too difficult to come up with. Um, and it would help a lot because as you get up here, the strings are very high off of the neck and just, you know, a little bit of a neck angle would have been a really awesome thing because it does get very difficult. Up here, I was noticing when I was jamming over the weekend, I was like, ah, oh, I'm coming in just a little bit late because I'm simply struggling to get the strings down to the neck. Really small thing all things considered for a cardboard box base but an neck angle would be great um it doesn't have one maybe it's something you could build into version number two all things considered it's just a really really fun thing one idea that i had because i do go to a lot of music festivals in the summer and i go jamming all night at the campground and all, all the campfire and all that stuff I covered the bottom of this with clear plastic packing tape just for a little bit of additional protection 
it is cardboard and as you jam through the you know the wee hours of the day um the grass can get wet or maybe someone spills something on the ground and you put your base down on it it's it is only cardboard so i protected it with a little bit of tape on the bottom just to you know protect it otherwise i tried to keep it in my van or my trailer whenever i could because i didn't want people uh spilling on it or leaving it out overnight and the cardboard gets damp in the mountains or whatever but um super fun <laughs> Hey guys, I'm actually sitting here editing the video and realized that in the third or fourth take of that video, I forgot to mention the pickup. It comes with a very small, inexpensive piezo pickup that attaches to the inside of the back of the base. Uh, it doesn't sound that great, and it does tend to pick up a lot of your body noise against the box itself, but it does have a pickup, and I wanted to give you a little audio demo of that, so you're gonna watch the same exact clip, but with that sound on it, and uh, it's going direct into GarageBand, being run through one of the amplifier simulators there. So here is that same clip, but using the pickup going direct into my computer. All right, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, I would love, I would love to rebuild this. I have this idea. I'm going to, at some point when this cardboard all gives out, I'm going to gut the neck off of it because it is, like I said before, neck through. And I'm going to buy some waterproof foam board, probably from the guys at Flight Test. Probably <laughs> some of you may know that YouTube channel. It's F-L-I-T-E, flighttest.com. They uh, make this foam board that's really designed for remote controlled airplanes that they built, but it is waterproof foam board, which I think would be really, really perfect for this because waterproof and foam board. So it's durable and it's waterproof. Whereas this is just cardboard, which, you know, is uh, susceptible to all the things that normal cardboard is, you know, so <clears throat> not the most um, resilient and durable material, but for a cardboard box base, what do you want? I mean, it's 120 bucks for the kit, if you're curious. A uh, couple interesting things. This is the 12th fret, if you're, you know, 12th fret, this is the midpoint. Uh, and then this is the, uh, the E. And up here is the A. So the fact that like these screws, which I screwed in myself in pre-drilled holes, the fact that these holes do actually strategically line up in a location, I was like, oh, that's actually pretty fun to know. Um, really good idea. You might as well put them somewhere logical for the player. I thought that was a really good idea. But I mean, basically tool wise, you need uh, a really, really good, hot, hot glue gun. You need a box cutter, uh, some wood glue, some packing tape. Uh, and up here, you know, for tuning it, it's just nuts and bolts and washers. So you, <laughs> you need like me, I went around the festival with this 11 millimeter wrench. And, um, you know, every time I had to tune it, everybody's like, oh, he had his wrench, but <laughs> uh, you know, it is what it is. It made it, it was an interesting conversation point. Every time this thing came up, everybody wanted to play it. Everybody asked questions about it. It was really, really fun. So, you know, if you're someone, like I said before, if you're someone who's like me and wants to play the upright bass, uh, can't afford it. This is a really, really, really fun option. Last thing I want to say is about my F holes here, which I did actually cut out. These are not something they, uh, they don't even talk about it in the instructions or anywhere online. So anybody out there who's curious, does cutting holes in your Bogdan cardboard box space really make a difference? Um, no, not really. It made a difference because it looks good. <laughs> But as far as a volume increase, like maybe 1% louder than it was before. 
I was a little disappointed in the overall volume because it is a quiet bass, but like, you know, if you're jamming with acoustic guitars and stuff, it's loud enough. Um, nobody was like, oh, I wish that was louder. Nobody said anything like that. I was the only person that wished it was louder. Because, you know, if you ever play a real upright bass, they are kind of loud, but they're gigantic, uh, which this is not. Um, I have it on a bench right now, so it's it's up, you know, me next to it, not on the bench. It's about here. You can see it's, uh, you know, I'm about six foot one. So it's, it's, it's mm, four feet tall, five feet tall, roughly. Um, it's, a, it's a fun little thing. So this is just what I wanted to show you. A little show and tell today here on Garage by Hand and Beyond. If you guys like this video and all these kinds of things that I've been talking about or any of these instruments around me, there are videos on all sorts of things here on Garage Band and Beyond. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, blah, 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 all that stuff. Standard YouTube outro finished. All right, you guys, have an awesome day. I will talk to you soon. Peace and love.